Hey Fragheads and Fragrance Lovers, welcome back. It's Benjamin here at the Centaur Fragrance Channel. I really do appreciate you stopping by today, but we're going to be talking about Amber Fever from the House of Monsara. This is a beautiful fragrance, highly underrated, and it's just a gorgeous beauty. So let's jump into the notes. First off, when you smell this fragrance, you're going to notice that there's something different about this fragrance. It's uh, not your typical fragrance. It's it's blended and it's got some unique kind of accords and some unique styles with you know the notes that are going in here. You uh, I immediately noticed this golden uh, cake kind of uh, quality about this fragrance that's often described as tiramisu. Yes, there is a coconut cake kind of quality going through this fragrance. I wouldn't describe this fragrance as a pure on gourmand, but it does kind of have some uh, gourmandish elements. Uh, really nice. I uh, I also detect uh, some musk off the top of this fragrance you know the musk uh, being off the top it's fresh it's inviting very likable very easygoing type of dna uh, really kind of simple but there's also some really nice nuances going on in this fragrance there's some coffee that grabs your attention in the opening it's not a dark dark coffee it's not a really strong coffee it's not bitter anything like that it's very much in the background supporting the fragrance and, and playing very well with the other notes it's not a dominant note at all so if you're expecting a lot of coffee maybe you would want a lot of coffee this has just got a little bit of it you kind of have to search for it but overall it's a very nice composition very well done you notice some jasmine in the heart that's really rounding out the fragrance adding some uh some some exquisite some beauty and adding some really luxurious uh you know a vibe to this fragrance it smells a little bit uh, refined and a little bit classy, but it's not too showy. It's not too loud. And in the, in the dry down, you notice this oak moss that's very dry and almost comes off as like a, a gray uh, type of like an aged oak moss that almost gives this fragrance uh, an almost a tobacco like quality to it. Really um, adding a little bit of intrigue, also making this fragrance a little bit more interesting. Overall, it's it might seem simple, but there are some fascinating little nuances. And um, I have seen some people kind of give this fragrance lukewarm reception. We'll get into my final thoughts and my, my thoughts about the performance here in a second. But overall... I do have to say that this is one of the easiest going, one of the mass appealing, most mass appealing and easiest to wear Monsaras out of the bunch. Sudrop Boise and uh, Oud Lemon Mint are probably the two easiest to wear, and I think that this is right behind those. This is one of the easiest to wear and the easiest to understand out of the bunch. There's no ouds, there's nothing scary coming through with this fragrance, there's nothing unusual, and uh, particularly, and it does have sweetness to it. So it, uh, it the DNA and uh, some of this fragrance reminds me a little bit of uh, YSL's um, You Say Laurence Le Homme, the, the predecessor to La Nuit de L'Homme. It's, uh, you know, being a kind of a sweater kind of fragrance, uh, refined, almost like an aromatic, almost cottony fragrance. So it reminds me of that a little bit. So really, really nice fragrance overall. Um, you know, performance-wise, no slouch here. Some people have criticized it for its performance. This is not Red Tobacco by Monsara. This is not a Beast Mode, one of the Monsaras that can be really in your face, bold, Beast Mode projecting, super long, uh, really long-lasting. This is a, a, still a very solid performer, though. You're going to get seven, eight hours, maybe nine hours. It's not a Beast Mode fragrance. Projection is still a little bit above average. Siage is actually still quite excellent. So as far as performance goes, you know, this is a, still an amazing value for your money. We'll talk about that in a second as well. But guys, I mean, I, I don't see why how you can criticize the performance of this fragrance. Just like, you know, maybe, the, again, the Sauvage, the EDT compared to the EDP, uh, it's kind of the same story. Still solid performance, still good performance, and there's still going to be a lot of people who think that this performs even too strong. There's a lot of people out there who are going to think this fragrance is way too strong still. Uh, so you can't expect every fragrance to be a beast mode fragrance. You can't expect every fragrance to be a red tobacco or a really strong, strong fragrance. So... I like this fragrance, that it's more wearable for everyday situations, it's a little bit more reasonable, and it makes it also, it's a versatile smelling fragrance, but also performance wise, it makes it a little bit more versatile as well, and that it's not too assertive, it's not too loud, it's not too bold, where I'm going to fill up a room. Uh, at least I don't want to, and perhaps I don't think it's responsible to want to fill up a room, or have people smell you 10, 20 feet away in every situation. You know, sometimes if you're in some situations, that can just be plain rude. You know, 
some people take that to the extreme. For example, with the Japanese people, uh, you know, fragrance is almost taboo. And if you wear a fragrance, you wear very little of it. And, uh, you know, it, imagine if you were to go on, you know, on a train ride or if you were in public transportation or in a highly populated city. If you have a fragrance that projects 10 or 20 feet, uh, you put on 10, 20 sprays of a fragrance, perhaps, you know, of a strong performing fragrance like a Montal or Montsara or some of these perhaps even niche fragrances, you know, you could make possibly 200 people even in your radius just around you smell that fragrance. You could force them and it would be, you know, very perhaps very rude to some people. Uh, that's a tangent. Sorry about that. I did want to put that out there. But uh, this is a solid performing fragrance. This is a fragrance with enough performance, more than enough performance, and it really can do you very well. Compliment factor wise, this is one of the a really good uh, compliment factor fragrance. Um, it did get me noticed. Uh, it didn't get me any crazy compliments. I wasn't chased down, but it, it, it's, it made me feel cozy and it made other people feel cozy around me. Again, it has uh, some sweet elements, some cakey elements. It's almost like eating, uh, uh, you know, a, a cake, a golden cake, uh, with a little bit of coffee on the side. It almost smells a little bit like a cafe, just a little bit. You know, maybe they just pulled out a lot of butter and they're starting to make a cake, um, you know, in the distance and uh, you're sitting waiting for perhaps your plate of food and uh, another customer, you know, somebody sitting over there a couple feet away and they just ordered a, a cup of coffee. So it kind of has a smell like that. So if you want some visual imagery. So anyways refined fragrance very well composed very well done uh, at least a little bit better of a composed fragrance for Mansara. some of them are still kind of chaotic uh, this one is a better composed one i find it more interesting than some of them i find it a little bit more intriguing with how the fragrance develops and also uh, it's very wearable for me in my world so really nice fragrance i do have to say that uh, if you're probably wondering the whole time why is it called amber fever please talk about that name to me, it's more of a fragrance that feels like a uh, a fever pitch. Like, uh, you know, if you've ever felt very excited, if you've ever felt really energetic, or you felt like you really desired something, almost like lust, um, this fragrance can have that quality about it, like a, a energetic, like something about to burst, and you really, you know, something really desirable. Um, it has that kind of emotion. This does have some perhaps modern amber molecules to it perhaps hidden up in this fragrance but this is not an amber fragrance this is not deep or resinous or uh dark or amber smelling or anything like that um it doesn't really smell like your typical amber amber fragrance it doesn't smell like that at all to my nose and i've tested that and i've asked other people's opinions and honestly, this name to me is kind of corny. I don't think it's named great. Maybe this fragrance would sell better if it was named something else, uh, you know, given a better name. And maybe that's one reason this fragrance didn't sell so well. Ember Fever, uh, I'm not exactly sure the inspiration and the name behind this fragrance. It doesn't really make a lot of sense to me, but perhaps somebody else out there can uh, make sense and maybe do a fragrance review that can enlighten us. Maybe I'm just not under getting the name. Anyways, to me, it just feels like a fever pitch. It just feels like some, you know, something energetic, desirable, and heat. So anyways, really nice fragrance uh, overall. Can't say enough good about it. You can pick this one up if you are able to find it for $80. Sometimes you can even find it less. This is a highly underrated fragrance. Sometimes you can find it even less than $80. Again, these are four ounce bottles. They're bigger than normal. And it is a higher quality fragrance. Um, full retail on Monsara's are about $180. I think a lot of people forget that because of the discount market. These are not cheap fragrances. For $80, bucks, you are getting a great bang for your buck. Even if, uh, no matter really what, no matter what Monsara fragrance, Fragrance it is for 80 bucks for a Monsara fragrance. I mean, this is really a good bang for your buck and have it will have you smelling good performance and you get a lot of juice for your money. This is a four ounce bottle. It's a big one. So anyways, everybody. I'll wrap up this review today. I hope that I did justice to the beautiful Amber Fever from Mansara. It's a solid fragrance. The opening can be quite magnetic, but then some people find like the fragrance kind of lets them down in the dry down. It's a little bit simple. It might not be as interesting as you would like for a niche fragrance, especially if you pay full retail. I could see why you would be disappointed for paying full retail, but for 80 bucks, this is an outstanding fragrance. And I do would like to see, you know, maybe more fragrances that are more, even more like this. I would actually prefer fragrances that have solid performance, but also are somewhat reasonable, uh, you know, not beast mode, not in people's
people's faces. I would prefer more fragrances like this. Anyways, please like, comment, subscribe, all those good things. I'll see you next time, everybody. Have a beautiful day, and bye.